So for the for questions, you guys either can say it aloud or probably easier to type it into the chat. So I have like a little running tally um, of what we need to look at. Okay, couple on number 11. And five is a good one, um, as I was pretty disappointed at the lack of progress we made on five and six here. So this is a good one. We're going to do either five or six as an example, whether you guys asked about them or not. So, okay. Uh, so we'll start with number five. So the first thing we need to do is look at the information that we're given to determine which um, form we'd want to write our equation in. Since we're just given a generic three points, we don't know if one of them is the vertex. We can see right away because none of the y-coordinates are zero. They're not x-intercepts. So these are just three generic points. So we're going to be using standard form. And the standard form equation is ax squared plus bx plus c. So for me to answer this question, I need to figure out values for a, b, and c. Now, if you remember, there's no relationship between the points and the letters a, b, and c. So like unlike some of the previous problems where you can get some of the letters that you're looking for basically for free, um, that doesn't work here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a system of three equations because what we have are three xy's. So we're going to plug in each of those xy's into our standard form equation to create three separate equations that we'll solve then for a, b, and c. So 6 is going to go in for y. And then negative 5 is going to go in for x from the first point. And then for the next point, 2 is going to go in for y. And negative 1 is going to go in for x. And then for the last point, 6 is going to go in for y. And 0 is going to go in for x. And that's going to create our system. Now. We talked last, and a, a nice easy way to do that is to use a matrix. Um, in order to use a matrix, though, this system needs to be formatted in a particular way. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify some things down. So I'm going to take care of all these squares, and then I'm going to rewrite everything with the equal sign on the right hand side instead of the left hand side. Excuse me. Uh, negative 5 squared is 25, and then we have negative 5b, and then I'm going to write a 1c. I'm going to put a 1 there because when we translate this into a matrix, we need the coefficients. So I'm going to just write the 1s there, even though I don't really need to, um, it just to help me remember that I got to write that down when I write the matrix. Uh, negative 1 squared is 1a, and then we have... Oops, uh, negative 1b, and then a 1c is equal to 2, 0a, 0b, 1c is equal to 6. Okay, so now my system is all formatted nicely, so I can translate that into a matrix. So the matrix that I'm going to translate it to, I'm just going to take the coefficients from that system. So 25, negative 5, 1, 6. That's my first row. And I repeat that process for the next two rows. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the command RREF on that matrix. So now it's calculator time. So fire up my calculator and turn it on. And I want to start by entering this matrix into my calculator. So to do that, I have to open up the matrix menu. So I'm going to press second. 
and then the x to the negative 1 button. And then to type the matrix into my calculator, I'm going to move over to the Edit tab. So I'm going to use the arrow buttons to move over to the Edit tab. And I'm going to select any of these matrices. Mine are all have stuff in them already, so it doesn't matter. I'm just going to type over it. If yours are blank here, it doesn't really matter what it says here. We're going to change it in a minute anyways. So I'm going to just use matrix A, press Enter. So the first thing I need to do is set the shape of my matrix. So what I've written down here has three rows, one row for each equation, and then four columns, one column for the A coefficients, one column for the B coefficients, one column for the C coefficients, and one column for the answers. So three by four is what I have. We're always rows first and then column second. So I'll type three, enter, and four, enter, but since I'm already there, I don't really have to do anything. And then I'm going to just type in the entries of my matrix exactly as they look. So 25 and press enter, negative 5 and press enter. So I'd already done this problem on the calculator, so all these values are already here. But I would just keep on going and typing in and then pressing enter to move to the next entry. So like 6 and then enter, and I would just keep going. Once I have my matrix entered into my calculator, I'm not going to continue because I've already done this part. Um, I'm going to exit back out to the main screen. So press second and the mode button. Then I need to go back into the matrix menu and retrieve the RREF command. So press second and the X to the negative one again. This time we're going to move to the math tab. So I'll arrow over to the math tab. And then I'm going to just scroll down until I find that command RREF. Make sure you pick RREF and not REF. They are different. You need the one with two R's. And then I need to retrieve that matrix A that we just entered into the calculator. So to do that, I'll press second, matrix. And then from the names tab, I'm going to select my matrix A close my parenthesis and press enter. So the output from the matrix gave us this, and the part that we care about is really just this column here at the end, because these just tell us the values for our A, B, and C. So now that we have that, we can write our standard form equation. So y equals 1x squared plus 5x plus 6. And that's our final answer. Hallie, are we okay with what we did there? I can't hear you if you're responding. I think you're probably still muted. Or maybe we just like fell asleep or something. Anyways, does anybody else have a question about this particular problem before we move on to the next one? Okay, I can't hear anybody speaking, so I'm going to assume that you're not trying to talk to me. If you are and I'm having trouble hearing you, use the chat because I think that's probably still working fine. Um, until I hear otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and move on to Andrew's question here, which was number four from the same assignment. So four we're told we have the we want the quadratic that passes through the points negative two zero two zero and then four negative six. This, however, is not necessarily the same situation as the previous one. This one can be much simpler. Now you could do it the same way because you still have three points. Um, but what's key here is that these two points are x-intercepts. 
And I know they're x-intercepts because their y-coordinate is zero. So since I have two x-intercepts, I can use intercept form. So to write my intercept form equation, I need a value for a, p, and q. The nice thing about the intercept form is that the x-coordinates from our x-intercepts are our values for p and q. So one of them is negative 2 and the other one is positive 2. So we got that taken care of, where all we have left to do is figure out a. To do that, we're going to use this point that we haven't used yet. So we're going to fill in those values for x and y, as well as the values for p and q. So negative 6 is going to go in for y. a is what we're looking for. Positive 4 is going to go in for x. And then negative 2 goes in for p. And 4 goes in for x again. And then positive 2 goes in for q. Uh, 4 minus 2 is 2. 4 minus a negative 2 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12. And then if we divide both sides by 12, we get negative 1 half for a. And that's all we need. So we can say y equals negative 1 half. x well, minus a negative would be plus 2. And then minus 2. Andrew, are you happy with what we did there? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Glick. Of course. Um, and Ava, you want to see number six? Okay. So number six is the same situation as the previous one. Number five, so still we're looking for something standard form. Um, so I'm going to go straight to just kind of writing down this. I'm going to skip writing this step, Ava, if that's okay for, with you, just in the interest of kind of saving some time. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I just, I didn't want to throw you or whatever. So we have 1a minus 1b plus 1c is equal to negative 12. That's putting the first point in. We have 1a plus 1b plus 1c is equal to negative 4. That's putting the second point in. 4a plus 2b plus 1c equals negative 9. That's putting the third point in. So the system then that will, or the matrix that we'll type into our calculator, we're just going to take those coefficients and do that RREF to it. So getting out our calculator, we'll go second and the x to the negative one to open up the matrix menu. We're going to go over here to the Edit tab, and let's select um, Matrix B to do this one, since I did Matrix A for the previous one. doesn't really matter, though. Uh, again, the shape here, we have three rows, because we had three equations. And we have four columns, because we have the A, B, C, and then answers, so there's four columns. And then I'll type this in exactly as it looks, so 1, Enter, negative 1, Enter. 1, enter, negative 12, enter, 1, enter, 1, enter, 1, enter, negative 4, enter, then 4, enter, 2, enter, 1, enter, negative 9, enter. Okay. Now that I have my matrix typed in, I'm going to exit out of here, so second and then mode. Go back to the matrix menu, so second and x to the negative 1. We'll move over to the math tab. 
And then inside the math tab, we're going to scroll down until we find the RREF command. We'll press enter to select the RREF command. That'll paste it to our home screen. And then we need to do this on this matrix B that we just made. So to get that, we'll press second and the X to the negative one button to return to the matrix menu. This time we're going to stay under the names tab and we're going to move down and select matrix B by pressing enter. We'll close our parentheses and press enter. And there's my output. And the part that we care about is just these last, or this last column, because it's giving us our values for A, B, and C. So we have Y equals negative 3 for A, X squared, positive 4 for B, and then my X, and then positive, or sorry, that was a negative 5. I just forgot to copy the negative sign for C. And that's it. Does that feel better, Ava? Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Of course. So again, if you had trouble with these two problems on this homework assignment, um, particularly doing the matrix stuff on your calculator, now that you've seen it again, after a couple of days have passed, try to go back and do these and see if you can get the same thing to work out with when you do it with your calculator. Um, if you get lost in the calculator parts, you can always go back and watch the video for today's lesson to see me kind of walking through the steps on the calculator again. It'll be nice because you can pause and follow along if you need to. Okay, um, any final questions on the previous homeworks? Very good. Uh, so you may have noticed here for the agenda for today, we have um, our chapter four test coming up on Thursday this week. So I've posted the test review um, to the content library in PowerSchool. So the format for the test will be basically the same as the test review. It'll just be shorter. So in some of these sections, instead of having like three questions, maybe you have one or two but I wrote the review a little bit longer than the test is. Um, so the, but it's the same types of questions. So you'll have to you know, rewrite a quadratic in a different form. You'll have to factor something. So I have a set of here that are either factorable using a shortcut or not factorable at all. Um, I have one that you can't use the shortcut on that I need you to show the work to factor. Um, I have some solving problems that I you have to use work or you have to show work to do. You can't just use your calculator program. Um, I have a graphing one where I ask you to graph and write down the vertex in the five point table. Um, oh, forgot to say here's um, two that we just want you to find the vertex for. And then three of these at the end, like this homework 11, where we're modeling. So that's the review. Um, I have the key for the review written up. So the key has some work shown in it as well. Not all the work is there for all the problems, but like should kind of be enough um, work to kind of, if you know what you're doing, to look at it and go, okay, I see what happened here. Um, but the, all the work is there. Um, any questions about the review or the test format or any of that? So we'll take the test just kind of the same way that we've done the homework quizzes in the past. So you'll get um, the file for the test actually emailed to you. On Thursday, you still need to come to class on Thursday. We're still going to be on the Zoom call on Thursday until you finish. Um, just in case that 
something comes up and I need to answer a question or make some correction to the test or something, um, it'll be good for everybody to kind of be there. But you'll do the test either in OneNote or on a separate sheet of paper, and then you'll make a PDF and submit it via PowerSchool Dropbox. Um, and that'll all happen on Thursday during our class period. Okay. Um, any final questions about any of that? Okay. Um, if something comes up, feel free to email me. But if there's no further questions, I'm going to release you guys so that you can spend some time working on the review, the remainder of our time in class, in a setting that's maybe a little bit more comfortable than in front of the computer. Um, so before you log off the Zoom call, remember for attendance purposes to just type bye into the chat, and then you can go and start working on your review, and we'll see you guys on Thursday. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good one. I will. You too.